Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing week one of my 2023 reads. This week just started off my year right with a bunch of really great reads. Also, I did forget one book from last week, so I'll include that at the end as well. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. So the first book that I finished was The History of the Computer by Rachel Ignatowski, which is a middle grade nonfiction that is giving you sort of a timeline and profiles of people and info on all kinds of different inventions and modernizations and developments in the history of the computer. Um, my husband Sush and I read this out loud to each other. We have read all of Rachel Ignatowski's other books. She does a whole series of middle grade nonfiction. We love of her art style and the way that she presents information. It's so great. Um, this one is really, really in depth and it goes through all of these super important things. Um, and because, you know, we're familiar with a lot of this stuff, there was just also a lot of discussion as we were going on. Um, and I think that as always, her illustration style is just fantastic and the way that she presents the info is great. I did think that this one was a little dense in info though. There was so much in this one that it took us months to get through reading this, whereas usually we work through her books a little bit more quickly. Um, but even so, it was fascinating. So if you like nonfiction and you like history and you like art, I definitely recommend this one. I gave it four out of five stars. Then I finished The Bullet That Missed by Richard Osman. This is the third book in the Thursday Murder Club series, and it is just as wonderful as the previous two books. Um, this basically follows a group of older people who are in a retirement kind of uh, commune type area, and they um, like to solve kind of unsolved murders. That's what they do in their free time. Um, and each book, there's an actual murder that has happened, or they uncover a a lot of things about that old unsolved murder that they're looking into that leads to a lot of danger and everything like that. They are such a great set of characters. Um, we're also getting lots and lots of other characters who aren't the four main kind of protagonists that are getting a lot of page time in this one. It has so many different points of view and I fell in love with like all of the characters, even kind of the villains you like to read from their perspective. Um, it has some twists and turns, but it's not like overdone in my opinion. And I just, I had such a fun time reading this. If you like sort of cozy versions of mystery thrillers, then I think that you'll enjoy this. And his writing style for me is just what makes, makes it so that I will read anything he picks up. I loved this book so much. I gave it five out of five stars. Then I finished The Confidence Gap by Russ Harris. This is a self-help book slash kind of therapy approach book that is talking about ACT, acceptance and commitment therapy, which is sort of like a mindfulness-based therapy approach. Um, and in this book, Harris is basically walking you through how ACT works, um, especially with when dealing with kind of issues of fear or um, struggling with confidence, those sorts of things. And the way that he describes like how this approach works and how mindfulness works and how to deal with these kinds of fears or emotions I thought was really really effective. Um, the basic premise of this is that when you have uncomfortable emotions like fear um, you know you're tempted to try to act based on those but instead what you're kind of trying to do in this mindfulness based approach is you see the emotions you accept that they're there but then you kind of let them go and you say okay but this doesn't really help me in what I actually want to do and so you sort of separate your thought your kind of feelings and unintentional thoughts from the actions and decisions that you make and I think that the exercises in, in this were really good the way that everything was explained all the examples I do think that it gets um, very self-helpy in its tone which wasn't like entirely my thing and I think some of the examples used are, are sort of not the sort of examples that I find as meaningful even though they were very illustrative of the points um, but even so I thought this was a really helpful book I uh, definitely took a lot of notes and there's a lot of things in this that I want to try so if you're finding yourself like trying to do something and you're just struggling to actually get yourself to do it I think this is a really good book to pick up and see if something in there clicks with you. I gave it four out of five stars. Next, I finished Meow or Never by Jazz Taylor, which is a pen name for Jessica Lewis, who wrote Bad Witch Burning, 
which was one of my favorite books of 2022. Um, and when I went to kind of check her out and look at her website, I found that she has this pen name, Jazz Taylor, for middle grade, like very cozy middle grade that she writes. And so I thought, let me go ahead and pick that up. Um, so I read this and it was so sweet. So first of all, I just love her writing. I just love the way that she does characters. Um, and so I found that I was liking so many aspects of her writing in this like very cozy middle grade that I had also really liked in Bad Witch Burning, even though Bad Witch Burning is like a very intense, um, very difficult YA. So the premise of this story is that we have a main character who is um, in middle grade and she's got major, major anxiety and panic attacks. Um, but she also loves to be in theater, like she loves to do all the backstage stuff, and she also has a really amazing singing voice, like amazing singing voice. And when one of the other kids kind of overhears her singing to herself one day, gets her to go and audition for um, a new musical that the school is putting on, and she gets cast as the lead role. She wants to do it, she wants to, um, you know, kind of show her dad that she's settling in at this new school, she wants to make friends, she, she wants to kind of do that, but she also is dealing with all of these panic attacks and it's very, very hard for her. Um, she also finds like a stray cat that is secretly sort of living in one of the back closets in the theater room um, and kind of makes friends with that cat. And it's all about her journey to figuring out what to do about this role that is stressing her out so much. Also, what to do about making friends at this new school when she just struggles to even speak to people. Uh, I think that the way that this story just explores friendship and explores also like family dynamics and explores the issues that she and her friends are going through, all of it was so fantastically done. I thought that the kind of way that this dealt with the severe anxiety and panic attacks was was wonderful. Um, I think that if you're somebody who has like a real bad anxiety, this may be triggering for you because it was really um, very, very much a huge part of the story, but I thought that this was just fantastic. I loved the writing. I loved the story. I thought this was excellent. So yeah, for me, five out of five stars. Very, very highly recommend. And then there was one book that I forgot to talk about last week, which was Tea Club Volume 1 by PMBQ. This is a self-published comic that originally was made as a webcomic and then put into print form. Um, and a friend gave this to me because it sounded just like my style of thing. It's about a girl who goes to college and loves tea, discovers that there is a tea club and goes, only to find that it's run by a bear. Um, and it just sounded like, oh, this is so cozy, this is gonna be such fun. But then I started reading it and it was just not quite um, my style. So I got through 52% of this before I stopped. Basically, this is very much like a lot of anime. Um, and rather than being like a very cozy little thing, it is a little over the top. It's got martial arts, like the bear that runs the tea club actually wants to do martial arts. Um, and there's fighting and there's, you know, just random bits of reactions and humor and just, it's over the top, like a lot of anime. Um, random sexy outfits for no reason, all that kind of stuff. Um, plus the drawing style was a little bit inconsistent for me. Um, it just was not quite as clean lines as I like, that sort of thing. So yeah, this had a lot of promise, but it just didn't end up being quite my style. Okay, so that is everything that I read this week, plus one from last week. I hope that you guys are having a good start to 2023, picking up some awesome books. If you have read any of the books that I mentioned, if you are interested in them, you wanna talk about them, or tell me what you've been reading, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.